What I want to do this week is I really, to be very, very honest about this, I actually don't want to preach what I'm going to preach. I want to preach something, but before I can preach that, I feel like I have to preach this to kind of set the foundation for that. Are you confused yet? All right, so, so, so that's, that's the goal. My goal is to get you to a place where you can receive what I want to teach you over the next coming weeks. Uh, but in light of that, um, let me say this. Number one, what, you're about to, what, what we're about to hear, what, what I'm about to preach to you, what we're about to encounter with the Word of God is something, honestly, that only hit me about within the last several weeks. And, and I'll, I'll break it down for you. But it really did hit me. And what, it, what I re- really want to preach on is how to receive from God, okay? That's what I want to preach on. And, and I'm not saying that I'm not going to talk about how to receive from God right, right here, right now. But really what I want to talk about is the mindset before how to receive from God. Um, because here's the reality. The reality is you, you, everyone in here comes to the Bible and to the Word of God with an understanding of what God is doing or what God has done. Okay? Um, if you were going to title this message, if you want to call it that, I would call it, God has provided. God has provided. That's, that's what I would, I would call it, okay? Because I want you to get an understanding of what I believe is the key to receiving from God. The key. Now, now like, like I told you, because I've only really got this understanding over the last two or three weeks, it's still fresh in me. So because of, because of that, it's not the most articulate, it's not, it's not all honed in, but it is a belief system, it is an understanding that I believe that if you can tap into it, it's going to help you tremendously when it comes to receiving from God. So is that fair, everybody? All right? So more than the words that I speak today, I want you to hear my heart. I want you to hear my heart. I want you to hear my heart. Because uh, I believe that if you can get this understanding, and, and I'll be honest with you, for some of you, it's going to really shake how you view the Bible and how you view God. But that's okay, because how many of you know you don't come to church just to be entertained, you come to grow in your faith? Right. Isn't that right? So if you can get with it, man, and if you can get with me, it's going to really, really help you, all right? So, so let's kind of go there right, at, right out of the gate. Uh, let's talk about this verse right here. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, what's the next word? Believe. believe. That's really where I want to take you over the next couple of weeks. I want you to get you to believe. I want you to get you to believe, and I want you to operate in faith, okay? But again, I feel like I have to lay the foundation before we get there. It says that you receive them. So you're to believe that you receive them, and you will have them. Well, here, here's the truth of what I see a lot of times. I see a lot of times people believing but they're not receiving. And I'll be honest with you, it frustrates me. It frustrates me. No, no different than when I'm believing and I'm not receiving. It frustrates me. But even more so, especially as a pastor, someone who loves people and wants to see all that God has for his people, it frustrates me for you to be believing for something, whether it's health, whether it's finances, whether it's for your kids, whether it's for your job, whether it's for your business, and you not receiving. Man, that bothers me. Because I believe what the Word of God teaches, and I believe it because it works, and it does work. But then there are a lot of times whenever something doesn't work, and I'm questioning what's going on with it. Well, hopefully I can help fill in the blanks. So here we go. Let's, let's talk about this number one question. And I know what everyone's going to say, but before I even put this on the screen, do not respond just because someone's beside you or just because I'm asking but here's the question that I believe we need to ask. Has God provided? Now, now, I'm not talking about food, clothing, and all that. I'm asking, is God, has God provided? Has he provided? Now, your gut reaction is going to be, well, of course God's provided. He's provided me a house, a car, a clothes, kids, you know. God has provided. God is a provider. Okay, yeah, but let's drill down on that thing. Has God provided? Has God provided? Um, Let me tell you how I got this idea or this, if you want to call it revelation, this is what I feel like God showed me. So about two or three weeks ago, I wasn't feeling so hot. 
okay? I was under the weather, but don't worry about it. It wasn't contagious. Everybody that got it before me died. (laughs) All right, but I survived by the grace of God. All right, Uh, because everything that I get, people die from. Uh, So anyway, um, with that being said, here's here's what happened. So I'm walking around the house here at the office, and I'm saying this. I'm saying this out loud. I'm like, man, Lord, heal my body. Lord, heal my body. Lord, heal my body. Lord, heal my body. And and now, I do not believe that that's an evil prayer. So please don't misunderstand. Again, hear my heart. I don't believe that's an evil prayer. I don't believe that's a wrong prayer per se. Although I do believe it's kind of a dumb, dumb prayer. Okay? And now, now watch what I'm saying. Now, I'll be honest with you. If you would have asked me three weeks ago, I was praying that. So, so if anybody's the dumb dumb, it's me, all right? It, it's okay, all right? But I'm praying, God, heal my body. And again, I don't believe that's wrong, okay? But then it hit me this way. I felt like the Lord just spoke into my heart. I already provided everything you need for your healing. So I'm asking God to heal my body But I know what the Bible says. He sent his son 2,000 years ago, die on a cross, and by his stripes we are healed. Point being, God did his part. My job is to claim the healing that he has provided. So why am I saying, God, heal my body? Why am I not saying, God, I thank you for the healing you've provided for my body, and I claim that healing over my body by faith? Okay? So I'm walking around going, God, heal my body. God, heal my body. And all the while, in my heart, God says, and and it wasn't like, Charlie, God says. It wasn't like that, y'all. All All right? If you hear from God that that way, that's fine. But in my heart, I just felt like, why am I praying that way? Why am I not praying, God, I thank you for what you've provided through Jesus in healing my body? Seriously. So, So the question is, has God provided? Has God provided? Because here's the truth. Where I want to go is, I want to teach you how to receive from God. But before I can tell you how to receive from God, we have to determine, has God provided or hasn't he? Because watch this, if God has not provided, then you need him to provide something for you to be able to receive that thing. But if God already has provided it, then it's your responsibility to believe for it and receive it. Are y'all hearing the difference? All right? So I broke it down this way, and I had no other way. Uh, In my mind, I was like, okay, how can I explain this or make this crystal clear to everybody? So hopefully by bringing this up, we can can do it and do it crystal clear. So I begin to think about different mindsets that people have, okay? So different mindsets. You know, there are some people that believe God won't provide. They just believe that. I mean, they're Christians. They love God. They're going to heaven, but they just don't believe God. God will provide. They just don't. For whatever reason, they don't believe that. They believe God did something at some point in time, but after that, he doesn't do anything else. And it's all up to, I'm going to use this word, the sovereignty of God. You know, some things happen, some things don't. You don't really, it's a waste of time to pray like Pastor Curtis was talking last week. He actually had a lady walk up to him and said, you know, God doesn't answer prayer. Okay, what, are you out of your mind? God does answer prayer. Okay, but watch this. So there is that group of people. Then there is the group that says, well, God might provide. God might provide. He might not. You just never know. I call it kind of casino religion. (laughs) All right? Casino religion. That's right. You take the quarter or the 50 cent piece or whatever, and you drop it into it. You pull the lever. And if you get three sevens, boy, it's your day. God answers your prayer. Right? But if you get two sevens and a cherry, I know way too much about this. <laughs> I was educated by church people. But anyway, <laughs> you get two, two, two sevens and a cherry, then boom, your answer, God doesn't answer your prayer. You know what I mean? And, and, and it's almost like a luck system. Like God answers some people's prayer, but God doesn't answer other people's prayer. And it's really based upon whatever the luck of the draw that you got. All right? So that's kind of the God might provide idea. Then you got the God can provide, but oftentimes it's connected to the idea of God can provide, but will he? It's oftentimes based upon the will of God. 
You know what I mean? And, um, you know, Lord, we don't know what your will is, but please, Lord, if it be your will. Okay, first of all, understand this. Um, that right there, the Bible says, number one, that you should know the will of God. Know the will of God. All right? You've been given two great resources to be able to know the will of God. Number one, the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. That's number one. Number two, the Word of God. That's, that's right before you. The Word of God. So you have the Word of God and you have the witness of the Holy Spirit so you can know the will of God. You should know the will of God. And I know, I know, Lord, if it be your will, heal so and so. I'll get there in a minute. I'll get there in a minute. Because that's a silly prayer. All right? We know the will of God because we have the Word of God. Okay? So now, you, so you got the God can provide. Then you got the God will provide people. All right? And I'll be honest with you, for, for, for most of my, my spiritual walk, I've been in that place. God will provide. I just believe with all my heart that no matter what I do, no matter what happens, no matter how it goes down, listen, I've said it this way and I'll say it again, that if bread goes to $500 a loaf, I will own a bakery store, praise God. I just believe whatever happens, I know God is going to provide and God has called us to be winners and victorious and through the atonement of what Jesus did, we are going to win and we are going to be victorious and God will provide it, praise God. Y'all hear what I'm saying? All right? So, so... That mentality rolls in me pretty naturally. I don't know why, it just does, okay? Now, let's take it a next step further, though, because I believe this is where God wants to take us and where God wants to grow us and where I believe God is growing me, all right? Where we move into a place where we realize God has provided. See, here's the deal. If you believe God has provided, then it's based upon what you do, not what he does. But if you believe God hasn't provided and God needs to provide, then God needs to do something. Let me flip it around and take it completely out of a church setting, but then bringing it back to a church setting. How many of you believe, how many of you believe that we live in a culture that denies responsibility consistently and all the time? How many of you would have get with that, right? That, that the problems that they face oftentimes are not their issue. It's everybody else's problem. Y'all, y'all get what I'm saying? It's the blame game. Now, if you went back 100 years ago, you would not see that. If you went back 50 years ago, you would probably see the beginning stages of it. But by most, by majority rule, you know, if something went down, they, they looked to themselves and said, Okay, why am I in this situation? Not because someone doesn't like me, not because of what they said about me. I'm in this situation because I have made choices that led me to this place and has put me in this position. How many of you believe that's fair? Okay, so now watch. Here's what I, here's what I want. We live in a culture that assigns blame, that doesn't take personal responsibility, okay? The way that influences faith is this way, in my opinion. Because we live in a culture that assigns blame and assigns responsibility to someone else other than themselves, then oftentimes it works its way into the church and specifically into Christians. And so therefore, here's what you end up with. You end up with that same blaming power, except it's not put on people per se, but it's put on God. And I hear it all the time as a pastor that, you know, well, if God would, if why didn't God God this, God that, God this, God that. And it's always, watch this, I very rarely say, you know what? I don't know why that didn't work in my life, but I'm not blaming God. You know how many times I've heard that? Zero. Do you know how many times I've heard, well, I guess that wasn't the will of God. Well, I guess God didn't this. Well, I guess God didn't that. I guess God this, God that, God this, God that. Always, always, always consistently. You, you know what I'm saying is true. Always it is God, not them. And again, I'm not, please understand, hear my heart. I'm not picking, kind of. <laughs> I'm just trying to say that we live in a culture that loves to assign blame. So the way it works in our life, oftentimes in our spiritual walk is we begin to assign blame to God. When oftentimes you have to realize that it isn't God's fault. God didn't do it. And what they'll say is, well, the Lord needs to. No, no, God has already provided. Let me, let me show you an example of this. You ready? This has, some of you are going to think I went off the rails, but just hear my heart. So this last Thursday, the cold front came through. 
You know what that means. Yeah. I told the staff, I said, don't count on me Thursday morning. I'm, I'm going to be in the woods. I'm going to the woods, man. Cold front, this feels like hunting weather, praise God. So I'm all about it, man. Well, here's what you don't know, that I, I, only, I only got a couple places to hunt that have private land, all right? And those people have been very gracious to me, being, allowing me to hunt on their land, and they got big deer there, and I love it. But part of the mystique of hunting is the adventure of it. Okay, it's not just about killing an animal. I promise you, honestly, in my world, that's the worst part of it. I love just being in the woods and seeing the animals and doing all that stuff. Now, don't get me wrong. If you got big horns on something, I'm plugging that thing, praise God. All right? But, but, but okay, so, so, so just to be fair, all right, just to be fair, I didn't want you to think I was a tree hugger or something. But anyway, so... Uh, it, Okay, so here, here's the deal. So back throughout the summer, I had been scoping out some property on Missinawa that I wanted to hunt. And every article I've ever read has always said, if you want to hunt public ground, you go find, I mean, the four corners of the earth. You get away from everybody if you're going to find any deer, okay, on public land. And part of pu hunting public land is the mystique of hunting public land. Everybody's out there, so it's kind of, you know, you're trying to compete with it. Okay, so anyway... Um, so I took in this summer, I found some land where you have to go about a mile, mile and a quarter back, and you got to cross the Missinawa River uh, in waders to get to where I wanted to put my stand, all right? It's a long, stinking way back, all right? Why? I don't know, because the guy sitting probably at the truck is going to shoot more deer than I will, but... <laughs> It's an adventure. All right. So I put my stand out there and it's all good. So September 15th, you can put your stands out. Step, September 16th, it's a Sunday afternoon. I waded out through across that creek, went about a mile and a quarter back, and I hugged my stands and I'm all excited about it. All right. Well, the cold front comes in Thursday. I'm pumped, man. The Wednesday night, I get all my gear together. I'm fired up, man. Got it all on my tote. I'm ready to roll, baby. So I get up 4.50 in the morning. Jesus doesn't even get up at 4.50, y'all. All right, 4.50 in the morning. I get all my stuff together. I drive the Suburban out. I, I get to my place, and I get dressed right there, you know, and I'm ready. I got all my gear. I get up, and I get going. Well, I realized real quick that I can't cross the creek because it had been raining. So the creek's too high, and it's dark, so I can't see how deep the creek is. So instead of a mile... It's a couple mile journey in the middle of pitch black, dark, okay, with, y'all get the idea, all right? So anyway, so I, I, I get all the way back there. I finally get back there into my stand. I'm all happy. It's all good. I've got everything. I've got everything. I figured I'm going to be out there probably till a little bit past lunch. So I brought me some peanuts, M&Ms, snacks. I got water. I'm set. I even got a can in case I need to potty in it, you know? I'm ready. Not n number one, all right? And I, I'm excited, man. I'm all set. The sun still hadn't come up yet. I, it's pitch black. I'm sitting out there. It's peaceful. Nothing going on. It's quiet. I'm just sitting in, this, in the stand right there. Well, I noticed, you know, I'm sitting there a half hour, 45 minutes. Now the sun's starting to come up, but it's still not shooting time, all right? So I'm like, you know what? Here's what I should do. I should get my bow out, and I should go ahead and get, get everything ready so that I can do it. And I got everything. I mean, I got my grunt call, you know, got my doe bleep, eh, eh. I got, man, I am sick. Got my rattles. I'm, re I'm hunting. I got everything but camel on my face, baby. It's on, right? So I'm sitting out there, the sun, and I get my stuff out, and I go, okay, I got my bow, got my this. I, I go through my bag. I'm like, where's my release? Where, and if you, if you don't know anything about bow hunting, all right, the release is what you put around your wrist that has a hook on it that you pull the string back, all right? So I've got, I've got six arrows with broadheads on it. I've got a bag full of snacks. I got, I, I've got grunt calls, antler horn rattles. I've got doe bleeds. I've, I've got everything. And no release. No release. This, how many of you know, I only need three things, well, four things to, to deer hunt. A license, a bow, an arrow, 
and a release. That's all I need. Instead, I've got everything. So at this point, I have to make a decision. What are you going to do? You going to sit there and let an animal walk by? No. I'm like, well, might as well suck it up, buttercup, go all the way back to the truck. So I get out of the stand. Now I'm walking, right? And I'm walking and I'm thinking to myself, I hope nobody else is hunting out here because they're going to hate me because I'm walking all the way through the woods twice, all right? So I got to walk about a mile and a quarter, two miles back. I don't know how long, but a long way. And I'm walking through. And while I'm walking, here's what I said. Now I told you, you thought I went off the rails. I'm still in my message. So I'm walking, and as I'm walking, here's what I said, and I said it out loud, and when I heard it, I thought, man, that's so powerful. I walked, and I said this. I said, you can have everything, but not have nothing. You can have everything, but not have nothing. And that's what I said. You can have everything, but not have nothing. And now, I think the Lord gave me that just to cool me off. Because I'm pretty well wound up like a three-day clock over the rel- leaving my release at the truck, right? So, but, but I begin to ponder that as I'm walking. You know, you can have everything but not have nothing. Here's my point. You can have all of the Bible. You can have all of it memorized. You can have all the promises of God. And you can know them all. You can be educated. You can have everything. But to receive from God... You can't go with the mindset that God hasn't provided. You can have everything and not have nothing if you think that God hasn't provided. But listen to this. If you can get a hold of this one nugget that God has provided, then it will touch everything in your world and everything in your life. Everything. So hear my heart. I want you to know that God has provided. I want you to see, even like from the very beginning, Genesis 126, God made man. In his own image, in the image of God, God created a male and female. He placed them in a garden, right? And he gave them, matter of fact, we'll just read it real quick here. And I don't want to wear you out with it, but here's what I want you to understand. It says, it says, God made man in his image according to his likeness. Let them have dominion over the birds of the air, over the, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, even the creeps that are on the earth. Praise God. I added that part, but you get the idea. God said, God gave them dominion. God gave them everything. Now watch this. Here's what I want you to see. So God created man in his own image and in the image of God, he created a male and female and he created them. He says, and then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, have dominion over the fish, over the sea, over the birds, over every living thing. And it goes on. And God gave them this and God gave them that. Now everybody listen to me. This is so critical. What day... Did God create man? Six day. Six day. What day did God begin to create everything else? The first day. Let there be light. Second day. Third day. Fourth day. Sun, moon, stars. Then animals. Then creatures. Then living things. Here's my point. God provided everything. Listen to this. And this is what hit me just a couple weeks ago. God provided everything. Everything that not just Adam and Eve would need, God provided everything mankind would need before mankind was even on the planet. He provided everything, everything. The last thing God did was made Adam and Eve and put them in there. God, well, listen to it. God provided everything they need, they needed, and then put them in it. Hello. God provided everything and then put them in it. Now, now, you say, well, what's the significance of that? Well, I believe as the natural, so is the spiritual. And and I'll show you that here in a minute. But here's the reality. God provided everything and then he put Adam and Eve in it. They never had to ask God for anything because everything was already provided. Everything, okay? Not just for Adam and Eve, but for the whole human race, forever, forever. Then the Bible says, Genesis chapter two, then God rested on the seventh day and he said it was very good. And the Bible says that God rested. In his mind, it's done, finished. Check this out. Do you know since that day, God has not created one cow? 
He's not created one chicken. He's not created one watermelon. He's not created one kumquat. Anybody know what a kumquat? Anybody? Anybody? Come on, raise your hand. Come on, my peeps. Yeah. From the south, man, you got kumquats. They're little citrus oranges, man. They're awesome. Eat the whole thing, peel and all. It's awesome. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. But anyway, God has not created anything. God has not created another fish. He's not created another deer. Not created anything. Why? Everything he did, he rested from and ceased from. He finished it. You say, well, Pastor Charlie, what the, what's the significance? Here it is. That everything man needed, God already provided. Period. End of story. You say, well, what about Jesus? Jesus came 4,000 years later after the creation. Yeah, I get it. But do you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that Jesus was slain before the foundations of the world. Before God ever made the earth, he knew the plan of salvation that Jesus would come and die for. If you don't believe me, it's Revelation chapter 13. Here it is. Look at this verse right here. Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. All who dwell on the earth will worship him. Talking about the Antichrist and the false prophet. Whose names are not written in the book of life, but the lamb who was slain before the found, from the foundations of the world. Jesus was crucified before the foundations of the world. Not physically, but God knew the plan and would work it out already. Here's my point. Before you were ever on the earth, God had a plan of redeeming you. God would provide redemption for you before you ever came to the earth. The foreknowledge of God. That was worked out before the sixth day. On the seventh day, God rested and he ceased. The Bible says, the Bible says he has never done anything since. He is still resting. Now, the plan of salvation, Jesus would work out. But God was finished because he had provided it. He had done it all. Are y'all, I know it's kind of a deep meat concept, but are you getting it? You getting what I'm saying? So now, what does that mean for you and I? Well, that means for you and I, we don't necessarily have to, we, we have to understand that it isn't a matter of will God provide it? It's a question of has God already provided it? Has God? Are there some things that God has not provided? Well, maybe so. But here's the truth. Most of what people are praying for God has already provided. God has already provided. And what they do is they're saying, God, I'll give you one, just a silly one, all right? Lord, send your spirit into this room and into this place. Have your way, oh God. Send your spirit in here. Okay, how many of you know that the Bible says that the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us? The Bible says that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Here's the deal. You ready, Charlie Riley? You can't shake him. Right? He lives on the inside of you. So why would you pray, Lord, send your spirit in here? That's saying you don't believe what he said he already provided. God, I wish you'd just be in our home. What? Are you there? Are you saved? Is Jesus the Lord of your life? Come on, talk to me in here. If Jesus is the Lord of your life and the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you and you're up there going, Lord, send your Holy Spirit. Please, Lord. He already did. He did. He done promised he would and he did. Why are you praying that? Charlie Riley walking around. Lord, heal my body. Heal my body. Heal my body. When all the while the Bible says by his stripes, I am healed. God already provided that. Let me give you an example of something easy that everybody can identify with also. Praying for lost loved ones. Let's, let's make up a name, Johnny. Johnny's mom and dad attend our church. I'm making this all up. If your kid's name is Johnny, sorry. <laughs> so you got Johnny who doesn't know the Lord, but the parents are praying, Lord, we pray that you would save Johnny. Okay, here's, to me, to me, that sounds like you're saying God hasn't saved Johnny. That's what you're saying. Lord, save Johnny. Like it's God's job to save Johnny. It's that blame. It's that casting. Lord, save Johnny. Time out. Question. Did God save Johnny? Watch this. Has God done his entire part to provide salvation for Johnny? 
Did Jesus come and die on a cross? Yes. Mm -hmm. Does God wish that all would come to repentance and know him as personal savior? Yes. Did God do his part? Yes. Then how do you pray? You don't pray God save Johnny. You pray, Lord, send laborers across Johnny's path. Because you have already provided a way for Johnny to be saved. We pray that his heart would be soft and that you would send laborers so that he can be born again and saved and serve you God. You've already provided salvation for Johnny. Johnny has to wake up and get a clue and get it. Come on, you hear? And I know, I know to some of you it's like, well, that's kind of splitting hairs. No, it's not. One is saying God hasn't done anything. The other one is saying God has, and we're claiming that over Johnny's life. Do you hear my heart? And it's a different way of praying. This is why whenever Jesus prayed, very, very rarely did Jesus say, Father, do this for me. Jesus was always claiming what the Father had already done. Jesus shows up, and the Bible says, he laid his hands on them and rebuked the Spirit. And healed them. He didn't say God healed them. He said, I know God has already provided healing. I'm here to enforce the healing. I'm not here to argue with demons. I'm here to cast them out because God has already given me authority over them. And I'm, I'm using those as examples. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Uh, and, and here's my heart. Here's my heart. Here's my heart. How many times do we pray for things? And we're praying as if God hasn't done it. When the promises of God declare, God already has. Watch this. Let me give it to you this way. First Peter. Look at this. First Peter 2. This will make sense now. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the, help me out, knowledge, knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. In the what? Knowledge. knowledge. Here's the deal. When you get born again, your spirit is new. And the Bible says you know all things, that the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you, okay? How many of you know that, yeah. right? Some of you got big Holy Spirits, some of you got small Holy Spirits, but you get it, right? Come on, it's a joke. I got a muffin Holy Spirit, all right? Muffin top. But anyway, here, here's the reality, all right? The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us, okay? Now, but... That doesn't mean I have access to everything that God has already provided to me because I have to renew my mind. It's about receiving the knowledge of God in my mind so that I can get in agreement with God in my life. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Okay? Now watch this. He says, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of, uh, of God and of Jesus our Lord. Look at this next part. And his divine power has given us Has given us what? Does it say he will give us? He has given us all things. Why? God is resting. He has given us all things. Pertaining to life and godliness. Life and godliness. God is, is health, life. Hello, I, don't, I can't even think of a better analogy of health than life. Right? God's given us all things pertaining to life and godliness. Well, why aren't we receiving it? Because 95% of people are saying, God, I wish you'd just heal my body. Praying like I was praying. When the Lord said, no, 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 no. You're praying it wrong. You don't pray for me to release something that I've already given you. How about you just apply what I've already said you could have? Come on, y'all getting it? And again, I hope, I hope you're getting it, man. I, 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 my heart is that you would get it. It says, as his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through how? Knowledge. Through the knowledge. You've got to get knowledge of it, though. If you don't believe God has provided, you don't have knowledge of what he's given you. But hopefully, prayerfully, in this service, you're getting a knowledge that God has provided for you. It's the plan of God. God is... God is not playing second fiddle to the devil's destruction. Is that fair? It isn't like the devil, the devil gets ahead of God and God goes, ooh, I didn't think about that. God has provided everything long before the enemy even showed up. Goes on to say, watch this. He's given us all things pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us from glory by virtue. It says this, by which 
have been given to us, how are we going to get it? Exceeding great and precious, exceeding great and precious promises. That through these, that through these promises, these promises, you may be partakers of the divine nature. It's through the promises of God that you reckon, listen to this. I'm not waiting for God to give me something. I see what God has given me from the promises of God. And because whenever I receive those promises, my knowledge increases. God has already healed. God has already provided prosperity. God has already, God has already, God has already provided. God has already, God has already, God has already. And then my mind comes in in agreement with it. So now it changes the way I pray. It changes what I say. It changes how I live. Why? God, your promises declare I can have prosperity. Your promises declare I can have healing. And I, it seems like I focus on them a lot. There are a lot of other things. Lord, I thank you that you've not given me a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. That's what your word declares. I don't need a Prozac. Now, if you take Prozac, I'm not beating you up for taking medicine. Take them. <laughs> Pastor Charlie said, quit taking my medicine. Take your medicine. Take your medicine. When God heals you, the doctor will testify. <laughs> Charlie is not that kind of a doctor. Okay? So, so, so here's the deal. Here's the deal, though. It's through the promises of God that we claim what God has already given us. So many Christians are praying, God, God, Help my finances. No, no, no. God, you promised you would prosper my finances. Show me what I need to know in my, my knowledge so I can run my money the way you want me to run my money so I can walk in the prosperity that you've already provided in my life. It's a different prayer. It's not, Lord, heal my body. It's, Lord, I thank you that by your stripes I am healed and you have provided in the atonement healing for my body. So I claim the promises of God. Oh, see, because listen to this. Here's, here's what I'm really trying to say. If you believe you have to wait on God to do something, how are you going to know when he does it? I'm just waiting on the Lord. What for? Well, I'm waiting for him to heal me. Well, how are you going to know? What if I told you you already did? Come on, y'all hearing my heart? All right. So here, here's the key, all right? Here's, here's some of the other. And man, I got a whole lot, a whole lot on this, all right? And I'm on, I'm on third scripture. <laughs> you ready? Here's the number one. If you're taking notes, write this down for sure. Here's the mentality I want you to have. God has provided. God has provided. So many people think God hasn't. Well, God has he has provided. I think about the children of Israel, all right? Think about the children of Israel. How many of you know God told them to come out of Egypt and go into the promised land? How many of you know that? 11-day journey. How long did it take them? 40 years. Why? Watch this. Watch this. So important. Why? Why? Why did it take them 40 years? Was, was it God hadn't provide victory for them? No. It was, watch this, it was God had provided, but they didn't believe it. And because they didn't believe it, they couldn't walk in it, and they blamed God. All the while, God's up there going, I bet you he slapped three angels and said, did you hear that? They're telling me I haven't provided. They're telling me that they can't go into the promise. They're telling me that there are giants in the land. Like, I don't know there's giants in the land. Come here, Michael. Pow, slap them. Come on, y'all getting what I'm saying? I mean, and, and why did God allow them to die in the wilderness? Because they did not believe that God had already provided. I had never looked at that verse the same way until the last couple weeks. It was because they did not believe God provided. And I see it so often in, Christi, in Christians' lives. 
that we just don't believe God has provided. We're still praying that God would do something. All the while, God's like, <laughs> tell them, I provided. Come on, y'all hearing my heart? All right, listen, listen to this. And this is, this is Hebrews chapter four. Read this in your spare time. Um, but here's the reality. This is talking about the children of Israel. It says, therefore, since the promise remains of entering his rest, they never, the children of Israel never entered into the rest of God. They never rested in God's victory because they didn't believe God had provided. Okay? Now, that is a type and shadow of what we are to learn from that. Here's the verse that speaks of it. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, lest fear, uh, I'm sorry, let us fear, lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well to them. He's saying, listen, they both heard it. But the word which they heard did not profit them. Why? Not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. He says, for we who have believed do enter to rest. We enter into the promises. We enter into the promised land. We who believe. We who believe. Watch this. As he has said, so I swore in my wrath. This is God speaking. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Why? Because they didn't believe. It says, they shall not enter my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the... the you know what it's saying? That the children of Israel could have went in there with sticks and bubble gum and whip the giants. They could not have lost because God had already provided it. Watch this. Not from that day, but from the foundations of the universe, from the foundation of the world. God had already provided for them victory, and yet they refused to believe that God had provided. And because of that, they couldn't walk in that victory. Come on, is this a challenging mindset? Come on, it changes the way you view things, man. It's changing the way I view things, I promise you that. Because now I'm, I'm sitting here re-examining my theology. I'm sitting here going, okay, is it wrong to pray this? Has God already provided it? So what I'm doing now is, in everything that I'm praying for, I'm asking, has God already provided it? Now there are certain things that, sure, God hasn't provided, I get that. But there are a lot of things that we pray for that God has already promised in his word that he has provided. And there, if he has already promised it in his word, we should not be praying for God to do it. We should be praying, watch this, that I would gain access to it by faith that I could receive it. Y'all get that? All right, I'm about to shut up here in a couple hours. So here's what you got to do. I'm resting in his provision then. When I know that he has already spoken it, he's already released it, God has already done his part, I need to rest in his provision. I need to rest in it. God has already provided healing, I'm resting in it. God has already promised me a long life and a godly legacy, I'm resting in it. God has already promised me provision, I'm resting in it. God has already promised me prosperity, I'm resting in it. God has already promised me a 12 point buck this year, I'm resting in it, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I'm resting in it, y'all get what I'm saying. I'm resting in God's provision. Matter of fact, I haven't found a promise that deals with a 12 point buck, so I must have to still pray. But anyway. <laughs> So hopefully you get that. Here's the last one, and I got to shut up. You ready? It says, the Holy Spirit is the key to it, though. The Holy Spirit is the key. Listen to Romans 8, 11. Here's what it says. But if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, how many of you believe that he dwells in you? Amen. Yeah, about half. Oh, that's good. <laughs> hey, listen, here's the truth. If that's the truth that God lives in you, you should never pray, God I hope you're with me. Isn't that true? The Bible says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. You can't shake him. Matter of fact, there are things that you watch that he's like, oh, I wish I could leave. <laughs> he can't. You follow me? That's a silly prayer. Holy Spirit, come and visit us. Where'd he go? He didn't go anywhere. He's there. You're, the very fact that you're praying that tells me you don't acknowledge his provision in your life and what he's already done. It's a prayer of unbelief. Do you follow me? Follow me? See how powerful it is? Listen to this. But he, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. 
Watch this. Through his spirit who dwells in you. Through the spirit who dwells in you. Through the spirit who dwells in you. How do you tap into the provision that God has already provided? Through the spirit who dwells in you. Through the spirit who dwells in you. God send healing from heaven. No, through the spirit who who dwells in you. God, provide for me through the Spirit who dwells in you. Oh God, speak to my kids through the Spirit who dwells in you. It's going to flow from the Spirit of God on the inside of you and flow out of you. It's not going to come from heaven. God is resting. It's over. Jesus has been crucified. The work is done. It is a finished before the foundations of the world. God is now you're to pray in agreement and believe in agreement with what God has already provided for you. You see it? Yeah. See it? Should change the way you feel about it. And it and believe it or not, I know in some of you, in some people's world, it's a this is a challenge to their faith. Because they're like, what? Well then what God is what has God provided and what is he not? Well, that's a good question, and I don't I ain't got time today. But here's the reality. It should make you say, if God's already provided and it's not in heaven and God's released it then it should be easier to get than if God had to do it. God already did it. Come on, y'all hearing me? Praise God. I hope you're hearing my heart. Hope you're hearing my heart. Hope you're hearing my heart. So here's the last thing, and I'm I'm going to let you go, all right? I, I would say download our app and get our notes because there's a lot in this. God is God has provided. God has provided. Here's the next part. I'm resting in his provision. And here's the last part. The Holy Spirit is the key to receiving it, though. The Holy Spirit is the key. Those are the three things that I want you to take home today. And I promise we'll build on this over each week, and hopefully it'll get clearer and clearer as I articulate it and make it make sense, all right? So now, let me ask you a question. Has God provided for you? Yes. Come on, amen. He has, right? I believe that with all my heart. Praise God.